Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lex Talk World Talk Show presented by Clickaway Creators. Today, we have Mohammed Al Dawish with us. He is Regional Legal Director at Carrier, Middle East, and Turkey. Mohammed started his law career in 2005 as a litigator, then switched to corporate law, specializing in merger and acquisitions. An American multinational specialized in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning sector. Mohammed has several legal publications and a lecturer on consumer protection law, employment law, ethics, and compliance. He also sits on board of directors for different companies. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for joining us. We are pleased to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. We are pleased to have you as well. Thank you so much. So, Mohammed, to start with, I think we all would like to understand about your professional and uh, personal background and journey so far in the legal space. I graduated from university in 2003. Uh, did uh, back then in Lebanon we had one year military service obligatory military service so I did the one year and started my law uh, career in Lebanon in 2005 January 2005 as a litigator so I spent uh, time in courts for the for around eight years uh, doing over 500 cases and uh, court attendance it was interesting because in Lebanon you have you don't specify in a specific uh, part of the law. So it is general. So I did criminal law, I did civil law, I did employment law, I did real estate law, uh, I did media law. So it was general. Uh, uh, it was a very intensive experience. I learned a lot from it. In 2011, I moved to Saudi Arabia uh, with another law firm, uh, which was specialized in mergers and acquisitions and IPOs. I worked there from 2012, uh, sorry, 2011 until 2014. In 2014, I got an opportunity with Carrier. Carrier is the, uh, is the leading uh, American company in uh, uh, HVAC uh, industry. Uh, actually, they invent, invented the air conditioning uh, Willis Carrier. So I started with them in 2014 in Saudi Arabia. 2017, I moved to Dubai uh, as a regional legal director for the business in the Middle East and Turkey. During this time, I, I was fortunate. I was able to do my EMBA at Health International Business School. So now I'm combining both uh, EMBA and a law degree, and I found that it's very beneficial. All right, that's that's pretty nice. Thank you so much for that runaround of a journey. And... Uh, uh, Talking about the business a little bit now, how do you think the business in the Middle East region is impacted due to the current conditions of COVID-19 and what are the legal implications that you foresee? Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, COVID-19 had the great implications on the business globally as a global pandemic and especially on the Middle East. So what we, we have seen a lot of government measurements in the Middle East like lockdowns for weeks for example, whether it's in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Dubai, or at least movement restrictions. Uh, uh, malls, companies are not able to work with a capacity more than 30%. Uh, you need to have a certain measures like taking temperature of your customers. You cannot have, uh, uh, and you need to have a social distancing. Uh, malls were closed for a long period of time. Retail sector uh, went down. It had great implication on the businesses. We can, and I will, I will talk about it from a legal perspective. When we talk about contracts, for example, we have seen some contracts put on suspension because either parties were not able to perform their obligations. And as you know, in some contracts, you might have liquidated damages and we have indemnities and uh, we had a lot of uh, restrictions, our contractual obligations. And suddenly, the contractual parties are not able to perform uh, the contracts. So what happened is we were going as a force majeure, considering uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 as a force majeure. And thus, we were, uh, some companies were terminating their contracts. Uh, this is one. You can see about the employment. A lot of companies now, because they have stopped doing business or the business went down or the revenue went down for a long period of time. We have been uh, in COVID-19 pandemic since January. So a lot of businesses are either uh, terminating their employees 
or giving them uh, unpaid leave or um, uh, giving them a salary reduction. And this was, for example, in Dubai and Saudi Arabia has been backed up by the government. For example, the government in, uh, in Dubai has said that employees and employers can agree on having a salary reduction or an unpaid leave. So you, you can see how great, uh, how oh, actually it's not great, how COVID-19 uh, had great implications or severe implications on the businesses. A lot of uh, companies, especially uh, SMEs, are closing down. Uh, yesterday, we heard that Hertz globally has uh, filed for uh, for uh, bankruptcy, and another uh, John Macy's, I think, also Jay Macy's, also uh, applied for uh, bankruptcy. So the effect is not just in the Middle East; it is all global, and it is like a, a dominoes effect. Absolutely, I, I I completely agree with you with that. Uh, the situation can, had, has kind of uh, suppressed a lot of uh, MSMEs who were kind of growing. And uh, if they come from some of the most impacted industries like tourism, like travel, uh, you know, then uh, like immigration, then, you know, there is a big, big suppress on that. And uh, you rightly said a lot of companies had, have to lay off the, the employees. Uh, but, but you're telling us that uh, Dubai government has come up with a kind of a solution where an employer an employee can uh, mutually decide on uh, pay reductions and continue working. I mean, this is the right way of doing it, at least in this uh, era, because we have to survive somehow. Thank you so much. Yes. And, I, and I think it really makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, since you're a legal professional, uh, what are those three core values that you truly believe in? Uh, integrity, honesty, and trustworthiness. That's what I find... Uh, and a lawyer should have these three values, whether he's an in-house or an external counsel. Unfortunately, we all hear these jokes. Ah, I, I lie a lot so I can be a lawyer. No, being a lawyer or a legal professional, it's not about lying. Or I used to argue a lot or I'm stubborn. That's why I should be a lawyer. No, this is not the legal profession at, at all. It's not about lying. Actually, it is about being honest to your client it's about your client and even your opponents uh, trusting you. So that if you want to be a lawyer, make sure that you have integrity, honesty, and you are a trustworthy person. Your clients need to trust you. They, you, they are putting sometimes millions at stake when they are uh, hiring you as a lawyer. They need, you, they need to know that they can trust you with their fortune or what the legal advice you are going to give them. Even for your opponents, when you are in a negotiation and they feel that this guy or the lawyer sitting on the other side of the table is an, an honest and trustworthy person, the negotiations take another place and you will definitely find an ambiguous solution. For all long lawyers, young lawyers or uh, law students that are going into the law profession, I advise you of these three core values. Thank you so much. And I, I definitely second you on that because, uh, see, uh, this is not a you know, one-day profession that you will be in and the second day, the next day, you will be out of it. You know, this is something that you have to, yeah. that you want to do for, for as long as you're alive and as long as you're uh, working in that particular sector. So, yes, uh, integrity, trustworthy is all these three values that you talked about are, are absolutely uh, core and are absolutely important to have uh, a flourished career and to have great, uh, you know, great uh, connections around you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. So, uh, you talked about uh, being an external lawyer initially, external counsel initially. So I also wanted to know, uh, so you worked as an external counsel before turning into in-house. Uh, how are these uh, two roles different and uh, how are affected each other? Okay. Uh, to some people, being an in-house lawyer, they consider it a retirement plan. I, I actually used to think like that. So I thought maybe I will work for 20, 30 years and I was an external counsel, then move into uh, an in-house role, which might be less working time, uh, more family time. Uh, to be honest, they are both, both have their pros and cons. Uh, being an external lawyer, you have a lot of working uh, hours. Sometimes we used to work to midnight. 
And even an in-house lawyer, sometimes you work, you have long working hours when you have a project or for example, during the COVID-19 crisis, we had to work a lot. When, we ha when you are covering a, a huge region and each government is um, having its own rules or, or its own measurements and you have to follow up on all of these, yes, sometimes you have a long uh, working hours. Uh, being an external counsel gave me a lot of advantage when I became an in-house because I knew how the courts think. Uh, I had the first-hand uh, experience in courts and uh, on law. So I took my experience from being an external counsel to being an uh, in-house counsel. Uh, being an in-house counsel, the difference than being an external counsel is that you have clients uh, you have internal customers. So the business units are your customers. Okay, it's, uh, when you give them an advice, it is your company. So you have to follow up on this advice, make sure it has been implemented uh, correctly and discuss the business aspect. And you have to mitigate risk and you have to weigh between the legal advice and the business risk. While I'm being an external counsel, you give the advice to your customer or to your client and you don't have to follow up because he, he is not obliged to, uh, to abide by your, uh, uh, by your consultation or not. So this is a, a huge difference between these. But to me, having an external counsel experience before you're moving in-house have given me uh, like an advantage. It's true. I, I think uh, you're absolutely right. I was talking to somebody uh, last week and uh, he was uh, an in-house and he worked for a law firm. And then before that, he was a individual practitioner for a couple of years and he said the same thing. So absolutely right. I mean, the, having that external experience really counts in when you, when you turn into in-house. And when you, when you start working for an in-house, it kind of adds up a lot of uh, responsibilities because now you're working for the firm and you're responsible for a lot of things. Uh, so yes, both the roles are equally important. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mohammed, for briefing us on this. Uh, I will also talk. Would like to talk about uh, technology a little bit now, because uh, since we have in 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 past few years, we have seen uh, legal profession or uh, legal sector, legal industry taking a lot of new, undertaking a lot of new technologies. You know, so I also wanted to understand the future of legal profession in light of technology advancements and artificial intelligence. What do you think about that? Like, like any other profession, the legal profession is being affected by industry 4.0 or uh, revolution 4.0. Uh, we will see artificial intelligence taking over in a lot uh, of aspects. Let's talk about smart contracts, for example. Uh, later on, uh, people will not come to lawyers for uh, a contract, signing a contract. They will be using the smart contracts, for example. Uh, we look at from another aspect, a lot of companies like Microsoft have developed programs that can analyze any contract in a fraction of the time lawyers take and give you the same legal advice. Uh, even in the US, they had one trial where a robot went to a court uh, to do litigation, for example. And, uh, to me, uh, we don't know how, what the future holds for us. Okay, uh, I don't think uh, robots will take uh, over uh, lawyers because you will still have this empathy. You have to have a connection uh, with the lawyer you are talking uh, to. You need to have feelings when you are presenting in court. But when we talk about smart contracts and uh, analyzing contracts, yes, the artificial intelligence and the new technology will be affecting us. So like they say, change is the only constant. So as legal professionals, we need to adapt to this change and find ways to use it in our advantage. If you take an example, Nokia, for example, uh, Nokia, when the smartphone, Nokia was a leading brand in uh, mobile phones. When the new technology and Kodak also, for example, for uh, photography, when the new technology for smartphones came on or digital cameras, neither Nokia or Kodak rode the wave. And they, unfortunately, they went bankrupt uh, for Kodak and Nokia is now, used to be number one. Nobody now uses a Nokia phone. So lawyers, we need to adapt to this change. 
Absolutely, and those two examples are uh, are actually classic. Uh, talking about Kodak and Nokia, uh, rather, I, I, it also it, it also reminds me of uh, a presentation that I saw in our previous conference, where uh, uh, you know a speaker ta talked about this. He said, "Technology is here to make." Uh, a better version of ourselves, not to replace ourselves. So let's not take exactly. it wrong. It will help us to become a better version of ourselves, uh, being more efficient and being more accurate. That's where the, the technology will help us, but it cannot replace us. And I completely agree with you and him. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Muhammad Al Darwish. I think you shared uh, some great insights for our viewers and they should be able to learn a lot. Obviously, for our uh, for young legal professionals and law students, uh, you know, who also kind of uh, view a lot of videos and go through a lot of a lot of times through our channel. So thank you so much for sharing all those great insights. That's really helpful. Uh, we look forward to have more chat with you in future, and we will talk about some of the topics in future. Thank you so much uh, for thank our you. viewers. Uh, I would like to thank all of you to joining us for today. And if in case you would like to see more such a more content, please. Uh, Follow us. Uh, follow our YouTube channel, uh, Click Away Creators website, and uh, we we keep bringing you such content from industry leaders in the legal space. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.